Electric cars are just a transition technology and fuel cell cars will be the final solution. This is what I hear a lot. And because I have worked on electric and hydrogen car projects, people ask me which one is better. So let's have a look at this today. What do we need for an electric drivetrain? We need a battery, an inverter and an electric motor. That is the whole electric drivetrain. The battery needs to be huge for decent capacity and the electric motor sits right on the axle it's driving. The efficiency of each one of these three components is well above 90%. As we know from our phones, the battery capacity is decreasing over lifetime, but even then the battery still works. It just does not perform as well as it did when it was new, but it's not broken. A battery is a chemical storage, so there are no moving parts, no friction, all stationary parts. The inverter is converting DC to AC to drive the electric motor and has no moving parts either. The electric motor is running smoothly and is brushless, so the only friction we have here is within the bearings. So basically there is not much that can break or needs to be replaced. And that is a problem for traditional car makers. The current business model earns them a lot of money with spare parts over the lifetime of a car. A cam belt, for example, costs the manufacturer 8 euro, but they are selling it for 80 euro to the customer and call it genuine spare part. And that is the same for all spare parts. Now, a normal combustion engine car regularly needs an oil change, spark plugs, new filters, cam belt, clutch, brakes and so on. But what do you regularly need for an electric car? Nothing of the above, except a new interior filter if you want. There's no cam belt, no clutch and the brakes last for a lifetime because you only need them for emergency braking. And it's not only the commercial side at the workshop that becomes a problem. A future with simpler drivetrains also means higher risk of new competitors coming up. Traditional car makers employ thousands of people to develop all these components, but what do you do with them if the drivetrain becomes much simpler? The solution is the hydrogen car. A fuel cell uses oxygen and hydrogen, combines them to water and this produces electricity. It's perfect for stationary use where the energy demand stays the same all the time, but not for a dynamic environment like a car where you accelerate and brake all the time. So in a car you need a battery between fuel cell and electric motor. So you end up with the same drivetrain like an electric car with battery, inverter, electric motor and on top of that you need a fuel cell, hydrogen tanks, a compressor to push more oxygen into the fuel cell, an air filter for that and a humidifier to keep the air moist. These parts need regular service or changing which keeps the workshops happy and because the battery is a lot smaller it has a lot more charging cycles than the big battery in an electric car. So it's even more likely to decrease its capacity over lifetime. If we look at the efficiencies, there are two big problems for the fuel cell car. One is that the efficiency of the fuel cell itself is only around 50%, which means less power and more waste heat. The second problem is that there are more energy transformations and that decreases efficiency even more. And this is only within the car and we are not even talking about producing hydrogen. At the same time, the electric car and the fuel cell car operate at the same temperatures. Electric motors like to run at around 65 degree and the battery likes to be kept at 30 degree. So if I have a fuel cell car with the same power output as an electric car, but the fuel cell has a lower efficiency, it means I need a lot more cooling. And because temperature levels are so much lower than at a combustion engine, I need the largest radiators I can get. Even additional radiators at the side are necessary for a fuel cell car with a decent power output. That also means that I need the biggest air intakes I can get and that results in higher drag. So if we compare a car with an electric drivetrain and the same car with a fuel cell drivetrain, we can see that there are much more components in the fuel cell car, there is less space for passengers and luggage, the car is heavier, slower, less powerful, always has worse aerodynamics due to the cooling requirements, higher energy consumption, more expensive and needs more frequent service at the workshop. Another aspect is the fuel itself. Today everybody can generate and store their own electricity. It's simple, clean, it works. But no one can produce and store their own fuel or hydrogen at home. Hydrogen is stored at 700 bar inside the car. So you need around 1000 bar to refuel it, which needs loads of energy and makes the whole process very inefficient. And the customer will stay dependent on fuel stations. So why are politics, traditional car makers and their well-connected car magazines spreading the news that fuel cell will be the next big thing and it's so much better than electric cars? Because it keeps their current business model alive. And to be honest, all of them missed the bus with electric cars. They would have to come out of their comfort zone and radically change their strategies and processes and fuel cell cars can keep most of their today's world alive. 
but it's by far not the best technical solution and they try to persuade customers to wait for and buy the worst product to save the traditional business model. So what do you think about electric and fuel cell cars? Let me know in the comments below.